morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed forecast update for February 18th, 2025. A lot to get through today including twin tropical cyclones, one forecast to form in the Coral Sea and one forecast to form over in the West Australian waters. Neither are a threat to the Australian mainland. Heavy rainfall occurring across the Northern Territory in Western Australia and heavy showers across far North Queensland expected to continue throughout today. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. And if you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things this morning with the two tropical cyclone threats starting things off of course over in the Coral Sea with a more interesting one being that Coral Sea tropical low that's expected to form over the coming couple of days. So our current weather situation is we're seeing a monsoon trough now begin to develop across uh, parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria extending in towards the Coral Sea and you can see this trough here firing up a good line of thunderstorms between Cape York Peninsula right out towards the Solomon Sea and north of Vanuatu. Now these thunderstorms are still very patchy at this time and this tropical low has a lot of time left until it properly develops but we are still expecting this system to develop and the forecast model support has only been increasing over the last couple of days. So let's just jump straight into the forecast and see what is expected. I would just like to preface this by saying nothing is expected in the way of formation for a good couple of days, so things can change significantly, and I'd also uh, like to say that this tropical low slash tropical cyclone, if it even does form, is absolutely no threat to Queensland at this time. So with, the, with those two points cleared up, let's move straight into the forecast. You can see throughout the remainder of today, tomorrow, and even in towards Thursday, nothing is expected to happen at all. It's going to be that monsoon trough slowly intensifying, and you can see it's going to be very very slow moving across the Cape York Peninsula. There's really no motion expected with this monsoon trough until the low pressure system actually gets spun out of it, which will happen probably sometime Thursday or Friday. You can see through Friday and in towards Saturday with the Eastman Bear forecast here, the slow development of this low pressure system. And I would also like to say that the Eastman Bear is very much a low baller in terms of the forecast of this system here, but it has proved itself to be a reasonably reliable forecast model. Uh, but come this weekend, uh, right through the formation of this tropical low, the forecast models are pretty much exactly on board in terms of intensity and location with the development of this system, with major forecast models suggesting it to be about, I'd say probably about three to 400 kilometers offshore towards the north, northeast of Cairns, uh, kind of in this general area here, directly south of the uh, most easternmost point of Papua New Guinea. I reckon that's where this tropical low is going to be, again, well offshore from Queensland, but you will be feeling blustery showers and the odd storm here and there along the north Queensland coastline, especially around the Sundays come later this week and into this weekend. More details on that on the Facebook page. But between the forecast models, after about Friday, there is a bit more of a split between what is expected here. You can see the Eastern Bay calling for very slow development as this system moves towards the east, deeper out into the Coral Sea until about the 25th or the 26th of February when it then starts to get its act together and heads further south. That's another common trend with the forecast is it heads further out to sea and then heads south sometime into early or mid next week where intensification is then expected. Now the Eastern Bay yesterday was calling for this system to be very far out to sea but you can see come around uh, the 28th to the 1st of March. We are expecting the system to approach the Queensland coastline and that's also in line with what other forecast models have been suggesting as well. At least some general approach to the Queensland coast can be expected here uh, sometime in towards the first couple of days of March before this system then stalls and then heads further back out to sea. Now the stalling motion that you can see with the Eastman Bear forecast is a suggestion that the forecast models are still very uncertain and that is the case. Beyond about Wednesday or Thursday next week, there are a lot of discrepancies and a lot of uncertainty still in the forecast here. You can see if we flick it over to the GFS forecast model, which is another very reliable forecast model, but a forecast model that can go out in a limb and call for some pretty wacky scenarios. I called it yesterday and said that I didn't expect the system to be holding up with that landfall on the forecast, and you can see in today's forecast, it is now well out to sea, still of reasonable intensity. It's probably approaching Category 3 strength, severe tropical cyclone status between Tuesday out towards Thursday next week, so it will be a reasonably strong tropical cyclone before that stalling motion happens into the dying days of February and into the first couple of days of March, which again tells me that there is a lot of uncertainty here as this system heads further south into the Tasman Sea as per this forecast here. So between the forecast from the East Bay from the GFS, over the coming couple of days, we're going to see the very slow formation and then the intensification come around Friday and Saturday of this tropical low as it heads slowly out into the Coral Sea. Now, come Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we are expecting blustery showers, especially along the coastline of the Whip Sundays and maybe up in towards far north Queensland as well. And we'll get to the separate far north Queensland weather forecast in a few moments. But uh, the, the in terms of the impacts, it's really not expected to be too much along the Queensland coastline. It's not going to feel like a tropical cyclone either. However, for the, especially for the wind Sundays with winds probably averaging between 40 and 50 kilometers an hour and a few showers here and there you will be able to tell that something is a brewing in the Coral Sea after about this weekend so Saturday Sunday and Monday we're expecting the system to then begin its slow turn towards the south and that's going to result in some intensification through the 24th out to the 27th of February as it heads further out into the Coral Sea down around here conditions are very good in the uh, heart of the Coral Sea especially out uh, very far out to sea you can see sea temperatures here between 28 29 degrees Celsius pushing 30 degrees as you 
get further north. Atmospheric conditions aren't as good. There is high wind shear out of the northeast, uh, out of the northwest, rather between 15 and 30 knots. So the system will have a bit of a struggle intensifying, and especially if it is a small system, it's really going to struggle there, being very susceptible to its environment. And then as it heads south of the latitude of around about Rockhampton, the sea temperatures then begin to drop off the cliff below 28, and then down towards 27, 26. But the fuel is very good right down towards the New South Wales Queensland border, so the system could theoretically intensify uh, right down to a line south of Brisbane out towards New Caledonia, and the tropical cyclone will actually intensify right down towards that line if atmospheric conditions do hold out. Sea temperatures in the Coral Sea are very warm at this time, so like I said, plenty of fuel out here for this system to make the most of. The forecast is, however, very uncertain in terms of track and intensity beyond about uh, Monday and Tuesday, the 24th and 25th of February. Whilst we are expecting that southerly turn, we're not ex exactly sure where the system is going to be in relation to the Queensland coastline. Right now, all the forecasts are suggesting it to be very far offshore, in fact, closer towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia than it will be to Queensland. But if it is get meant to be closer to Queensland, there will be some more significant impacts along the Queensland coastline. What I can say for certain right now is in terms of impacts, rainfall, wind speeds, anything, there is nothing major expected for Queensland at all. A couple of showers, like I said, for the Whit Sundays, but nothing in the way of flooding rainfall down there. Wind speeds should be below cyclonic strength as well. You can see maximum wind speeds throughout the uh, early parts of next week and this coming weekend along the Whit Sundays to be between 50 and 60 kilometres an hour. Now, this is wind accumulation, which means this is the highest uh, forecast wind gust over this uh, stretch of time between uh, Thursday night into Tuesday morning, when the winds will be at their strongest along the Whit Sundays and the Queensland coastline. Between other forecast models, you can see there's really no discrepancy here, winds around that 50 to 60 kilometer an hour mark, so it will be quite blustery, and that's kind of the only impact expected along the Queensland coastline. So I would just like to say this with a bit of a message, there is no need to panic by, there's no need to prepare for this tropical cyclone, there's no need to worry, there is nothing coming for the Queensland coastline, and again, like I said yesterday, if the forecast is to change, there will be plenty of notice. You'll have a minimum of around four to five days notice. If you were going to be looking at significant Queensland impacts, prepare and act in regards to this tropical cyclone. It is now looking exceedingly unlikely likely that a direct landfall is possible on Queensland. Now, that's very low single digit percentage chances and dropping by the hour as well. Uh, do not expect a landfall along the Queensland coastline at this time. And whilst this tropical cyclone slash tropical low, if it even does form in the Coral Sea, will certainly be very interesting tra to track. It's not going to be providing any meaningful rainfall either to the southeast and the south central parts of Queensland, which do desperately need that said rainfall. And you can actually see on the rainfall forecast here over the coming couple of days, I mean, whilst there is going to be plenty of rainfall where the system is going to track because of its A slow motion and be it's a tropical cyclone at the end of the day there's going to be plenty of rainfall involved in terms of the rainfall forecast at least for the next week or so there's nothing really to write home about for the queensland coastline a couple of good drops of rainfall expected up in the far north along the cape york peninsula and even beyond that as well even as this tropical low slash tropical cyclone makes a close approach to queensland the rainfall is expected to be light at best so again impacts from this system are expected to be minimal uh, very minimal indeed and we're not even a hundred percent certain with the tropical cyclones future as well it could just swing straight out to see. The chances of formation at this time as well are sitting at around 50-50. I do actually believe that it is higher than that. I do believe that a tropical low is going to form. In terms of the tropical cyclone formation chances, it's a little bit hard to tell at this time, but you can already start to see the beginnings of a monsoon trough beginning to fire up here, and I reckon there'll be much more thunderstorm and cloud activity across the uh, Coral Sea waters later on today and into early tomorrow morning as this monsoon trough does develop. But we're still about three days away from this tropical system developing, of course. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below or shoot me a message over over on Facebook. Far North Queensland, I haven't forgotten about you. We're just heading over towards Western Australia and the Northern Territory now where a more imminent tropical cyclone uh, situation is brewing here. You can see this bunch of clouds and thunderstorms north of the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf and outside of Darwin is beginning to develop a little bit nicely uh, this morning here. And this is likely to become a tropical low, maybe even a tropical cyclone as well. And the Bureau has been fond of the system as well on their tropical cyclone uh, track forecasts. I'm also pretty fond of this system, even though the forecast models don't have too much support for it. I'm just going to see if we can boot up a bit of a satellite loop of this system here. It doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon, but you can see plenty of rain across the Northern Territory and parts of Western Australia as well as a result of this developing low pressure system. I would also like to preface this. It's a similar situation to the Queensland uh, situation where there is no real threat to land, but you can see in terms of the low level clouds, you might be able to see them whipping around into the Darwin area. Uh, wind observations don't necessarily support it as strongly, but you can see some strong winds blowing out of uh, Troughton Island right now, north of Columbaroo. Uh, these winds here are indicative 
indicative of a stronger low pressure center and a tightening low pressure center. This, uh, this system here is actually reasonably close to becoming a fully fledged tropical low and possibly even a tropical cyclone. Let's jump straight into the forecast on this system as well. And again, like I said, absolutely no threat to Northern Territory or Western Australia at all. And the forecast models haven't really been picking up on this system too well. Not only is it because they're only seeing this as a batch of thunderstorms right now, not actually a low pressure system beginning to organize, but you can see the major forecast models east and west and also into the, uh, the GFS forecast are suggesting a bit of a low pressure center to wrap itself up throughout Wednesday and Thursday. I do actually reckon that this, if it's going to become a tropical cyclone, will do so Thursday morning. I think the conditions as it gets itself north of around Broome are actually very favorable for tropical cyclone genesis, and it is out of the way of those cooler waters that were whipped up by tropical cyclone Zelia just a few days ago, uh, which means that this system does have very, very good environmental conditions ahead of it and will be able to intensify quite rapidly. The axis is the only one taking this up to a meaningful intensity here, and you can see making the most of those very warm sea temperatures temperatures throughout uh, Thursday, Friday, and in towards this weekend as well, calling for rapid intensification of this system, bringing it up to at least severe tropical cyclone status through this weekend as it heads further out to sea. And a key point to note here is that the axis is keeping this as a very, very small tropical cyclone. So not only is it susceptible to its environmental conditions, which are looking to be very healthy at this time, but it's also going to be in a very favorable environment uh, thermodynamically with those sea temperatures, which means it will have plenty of fuel to rapidly intensify in a small system, as we all know with tropical cyclone Zelia, will be able to wrap itself up very nicely and very quickly. That's the reason the forecast models aren't really picking up on it. The Eastern Wave and the GFS forecast model is struggling to kind of differentiate between this being a batch of thunderstorms and a strong tropical low in the making. Uh, and that's why they haven't really called for a low pressure system to properly develop out of this system. But I'm a follower of the Axis G3 forecast in this situation here. I do actually expect a reasonably strong tropical cyclone to materialize out of it, peaking on Saturday or Sunday as at least category two tropical cyclone status, potentially up towards category three or even category four status. We're gonna know a lot more in this system by early tomorrow morning when it does actually begin to properly develop and I reckon there'll be a major change in the forecast models calling for a much stronger system than what they have been calling for today. But yeah, Access certainly calling for a significant tropical cyclone here. It's a very lucky streak that this is not going into the West Australian coastline. Uh, they've definitely had enough uh, for a couple of years now with ex-tropical cyclone Celia still moving through the gold fields at this time, providing some rainfall out there. But yeah, another monster tropical cyclone threat for Western Australia is not on the cards. This system here, if it does form, it's going to be uh, relatively short-lived as well similar in lifespan to tropical cyclone Zelia, but again, the key point is well offshore and as such, absolutely no threat to the West Australian coastline, minus a couple of showers and probably a few stronger gusts of wind as well. And you can see here on the rainfall forecast from the axis, which is the only one that takes us up to a meaningful intensity, the rainfall stops at thunderstorms, which are going to be predominantly inland at this time. And you can see a massive gap between the swathe of this tropical cyclone's core and the West Australian coastline. It's definitely going to be very, very far away and closer towards Indonesia than it will be towards Western Australia, which is very good news indeed. Like I said, they absolutely do not need any more tropical cyclone activity there. They are sick of it. Over back towards Queensland and up in the far north, significant weather, uh, significant rainfall rather, has been occurring there over the last couple of hours. This was not really on the forecast. I did say that there will be some heavy showers and storms here along the Cassowary Coast throughout the course of today as this monsoon trough does begin to develop and heavy showers there are. I mean, take a look at this here. A stagnant batch, uh, a bunch of clouds just offshore from the uh, north Queensland coastline providing some moderate to heavy rainfall. In fact, tending very heavy at times here along uh, the Casper Coast with some heavy falls being reported now between uh, Fishery Falls down through Innisfail, Tully, South Mission Beach, Cardwell down towards Ingham where rainfall accumulations have been up into the high double digits approaching 100 millimetres down towards the Ingham area and I imagine they'll approach 100 millimetres over a six hour period along the Casper Coast so this is something we're going to keep a very close eye on and then at Paluma Dam another whopping 200 millimetres fell overnight in a very short stint of time about uh, six hours ago with some significant falls were expected uh, with, uh, happening there and as such the water at the Paluma Dam spillway is now spilling over that spillway at about uh, 40 centimetres, I believe it was, or about 45 centimetres. So again, the Paluma Dam is still much above capacity at this time with some raging floodwaters in the vicinity there. Now, I did say yesterday that there isn't going to be any significant rainfall for those flood-affected locations across far north Queensland. That is still true, and I stand by that state, uh, statement there. But rainfall accumulations of between 50 to 150 millimetres over a six-hour period are still possible in some of the Tully and the Johnston River catchments, and then accumulations between 20 and 60 millimetres are possible in the Herbert River River catchments. Now, while this won't be enough to cause uh, flooding in those uh, river catchments, they still expect some flash flooding and some pretty big puddles around the Ingham and the Cardwell area throughout the remainder of today. And like I said, whilst there is no significant risk of flooding in these areas here, it's always good to stay vigilant at this time of the year because we know with far north Queensland, flooding can happen at any time of the year. Rainfall for the Daintree rainfrost will be disappointing at best. In terms of the forecast of this weather situation here, you can see the forecast models have completely missed it. No real rainfall, as you can see in the convective forecast here throughout the remainder of today into tomorrow. 
Europe, just a few showers and thunderstorms here and there. Uh, but you can see between the Eastern Weather Forecast model, heavy showers expected to continue throughout the remainder of today. Heavy showers also expected through tomorrow, especially up into the Daintree rainforest as well. And then as that low pressure system begins to build through Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, showers expected to continue, especially Thursday for the uh, Casper Coast and uh, Thursday morning for the Daintree rainforest as well. And then showers and storms continuing again this weekend up in the Casper Coast. So I wouldn't be surprised if rainfall accumulations over the next week were up around that 250 to 300 millimeter mark. And whilst that will be pretty evenly spread over the next couple of days, I still expect the risk of some fla uh, minor flash flooding around the uh, Johnston and the Tully Rivers. So stay very vigilant around there. Remember, if it is flooded, forget it. And it's very lucky that especially the Johnston River wasn't caught up in the recent floods up in North Queensland. Uh, otherwise, we would be actually looking at a pretty significant flooding emergency up there. But 350 millimeters should all flow into the rivers, no problem, especially if it is th uh, spread out over the next seven days or so. Again, far North Queensland, certainly a place to keep very vigilant at this time of the year and a place that I'm going to keep a close eye on as a forecaster up there. That's basically it for Queensland, the tropical cyclone threat. In terms of other interesting nuggets of weather happening around the nation, there's not an awful lot to talk about. A few showers and storms expected here and there around New South Wales and Victoria, especially towards this weekend, with the passage of a low pressure system and a cold front expected to make its way through Victoria. And that's going to drag in some very warm temperatures throughout Friday and Saturday across New South Wales, South Australia and Victoria before turning to showers and thunderstorms late Saturday night. As a cool change moves through Sunday morning, showers and storms also expected along the west coast of Tasmania, with the chance of some severe thunderstorms into the north in the northeastern corners of Tasmania as well as these showers and thunderstorms move through uh, Sunday night. So again, a good time, a good uh, thing to keep in the back of your mind through Victoria and Tasmania. The chance of some thunderstorms, potentially severe ones, Sunday afternoon with the passage of a strong low pressure system and cold front that's going to be moving through those areas there. Beyond that, nothing really interesting across New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. Uh, in terms of the long range forecast, it certainly is now looking like winter is going to pipe up for parts of Tasmania pretty shortly. I mean, we are now heading in towards March and that's going to catch a lot of people by surprise, especially as we're still in the midst of cyclone season up in North Queensland, but I normally find that the first cold fronts begin to pipe up late February, early March around the Tasmania area. They do take a couple more weeks to pipe up around the Victoria area, but before you know it, it's going to be April, and that is the start of true winter for the west coast of Tasmania. So expect this rainfall to come in thick and fast very shortly across parts of uh, Tasmania, whilst we are still in the thicker things of the wet season for Queensland as well. On that note, there's nothing else to talk about in this video update. I would just like to uh, talk very briefly about the long-range forecast for Queensland, the Northern Territory, in Western Australia. I've been paying very close attention to this long-range forecast over on Tropical Tidbits. Again, a lovely website that I'd strongly recommend uh, checking out along with windy.com, which is the website that I use to make these video updates. Uh, the long-range forecast is suggesting the return to rainfall across North Queensland sometime around March uh, 20th or so. It will be in, in the middle parts of March towards the later parts of March. That's going to co coincide uh, with the Madden Julian Oscillation returning for North Queensland up there. And that's when we're going to enter into another energy period with plenty of tropical cyclones and plenty of rainfall events expected along the Coral Sea parts of Queensland and even in towards the Northern Territory in Western Australia as well, even though those states will be about five days behind respectively uh, compared to Queensland. But yeah, the long range forecast suggests a return to the rainfall pretty shortly up there. So don't get complacent. We're still in the middle of the wet season and plenty more rainfall is still expected across Queensland and the Northern Territory and also parts of Western Australia as well. On that, note, no, that, on that note, though, that is all that I have time for today. I really thank you for watching the video to this point. The support lately has been much appreciated. Again, a special shout out to the channel sponsors. The names are on screen right now, and I could not run this show without them. Plenty to keep us entertained and plenty to keep us on our toes with Queensland and Western Australia as well, so make sure you are staying tuned for that, especially over in Queensland, and if you are interested in the WA cyclone threat as well. Whilst these systems are no threat to land, it's certainly a good idea to keep a very close eye on them. But that is all for me today. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Like I said, their names are are on screen right now and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.